Welcome to iLecture Online and to keep uh, our calculus friends happy around the world I'm going to do some, uh, some problems, some examples on how to do related rate problems. And I remember when I first started as a student many, many years ago, these seemed very difficult for me. And so I hope that uh, if you're also struggling like I was when uh, I was taking this for the first time, I hope that this will help you explain and help you uh, in your quest on understanding these types of problems. So let's go ahead and start with our first example. It says here that we have a spherical balloon so that its volume is increasing at a constant 3 cubic feet per minute. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius equals 1 foot? So, what's going on here? Well, let's draw a balloon. Here it is, the balloon. We're putting air in the balloon so that the balloon is expanding. And the amount of the expansion in volume per minute is the same. It's a constant value. So you have to somehow relate that into a mathematical expression. So it's the change in volume per unit time. We can say that the dv dt, the change in the volume per time, is equal to 3 cubic feet per minute. All right, so that defines the change of the volume. Then when the radius equals one foot, at that moment, they want to know what is the change in the radius per unit time. This is what they're asking for. So we're given this, and that's what we're asking for. And once you do that, once you define the change in the volume, the change in the rate, and so forth, the change in the radius uh, in a mathematical form like that, now you have a way to go about solving the problem. We now have to have an equation that relates the volume to the radius. And of course, with a spherical object, like a balloon, spherical balloon, we have such an equation. We have the volume of a balloon is equal to 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. If we now take the derivative of this equation, we'll end up with the dv dt and the dr dt, as long as, of course, we take the derivative with respect to time. So let's do that. Let's say that the dv dt is equal to, and of course we have 4 thirds pi, which are constants, times the derivative of r cubed, which means we put the, the uh, exponent in front, r to the exponent minus 1, like so. And then of course this 3 cancels out that 3, three so we can say that the dv dt, oh, and be careful, I still have a dr dt, I can't forget of course the dr dt. Since I'm taking the derivative of r respect to a different variable t, I still have to have the dr dt there. And then, of course, the threes cancel out, so we end up with dv dt is equal to 4 pi r squared dr dt. So now you can see that with this equation, with finding the derivative of the equation with respect to time, we now have a relationship between dv dt and dr dt. So now let's solve this equation for dr dt. So dr dt, according to this equation, is equal to dv dt divided by, when I take all this and move to the other side, 4 pi r squared. And now, all we have to do now is find the r dt when r is a very specific value, and it, right here when the radius equals 1 foot. So what we have to do now is find the dr dt when r equals 1, and I like to write that out like that so it makes a lot more sense. We're finding the RDT at a specific time when R is exactly equal to 1. So this is equal to dv dt, and dv dt is equal to 3 feet per minute divided by 4 pi times, and R in that case will be 1 foot. And then you can see that the RDT when R is equal to 1 is equal to 3 divided by 4 pi, and of course, 4 pi is about 10, and so 3 divided by 10 would be about 0 0.3 foot per minute. So that means that when the volume is changing at a rate of 3 cubic feet per minute, and at the moment that the radius is 1 foot, the radius is also increasing, but this time at a rate of 0.3 feet per minute. And that's how you do a problem like that. So again, to recap real quickly, we have a spherical balloon that's being inflated, and they give us the constant volume change per unit time, or dv dt is 3 cubic feet per minute, 
and they want us to find out how fast the radius is changing. So we come up with an equation that relates the volume to the ra radius. Then we take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of the equation. So we end up with a dv dt and we end up with a dr dt. We can solve that equation for dr dt like that. Then we plug in the value for dv dt that was given. We plug in the value for r that was given. So we can find dr dt when r equal to 1. And there's the answer. So it turns out when you do them like that, they're not that difficult. Let's see if I can come up with a few more examples to help you along with these.